So one of the most important things to note is that particularly in IBD, IBD happens or is more commonly diagnosed in the peak of childbearing potential. So managing a patient who wants to get pregnant or will be getting pregnant or is pregnant, so in the preconception, pregnancy, or even the postpartum phase, the role of inflammation and their underlying immune disease is paramount to understand what to do or how to manage these patients ideally. So I'm gonna start with the preconception counseling aspect, which is in a woman who has an underlying immune disease. I'm gonna speak more so about IBD because that's the area that I uh, counsel women on regularly is, can I get pregnant? So let's start with that even question because uh, a lot of patients come to me sort of tearful that they read that they can't get pregnant I'm not sure where, where that information is located, but I obviously uh, relieve that anxiety and concerns immediately and say, you absolutely can get pregnant, but we need to control your inflammation. So I think the disconnect is in really trying to understand across these immune diseases that inflammation control is paramount to all aspects of pregnancy. So the idea being is that inflammation probably impacts ovarian reserve. There's been a couple of studies that have suggested that someone who has chronic inflammation may have impact on fertility just by having inflammation. So the impact of inflammation on ovarian reserve, we can measure sort of anti-malarian hormone actually levels as a marker of that. Obviously the biggest impact of fertility is age. I, I should state that upfront. Unfortunately, after 35, you look at IBD versus non-IBD patients, after 35, no matter whether you had IBD or not, the fertility risk drops. So age is paramount, but let's, that's across everything. Let's speak to particularly uh, inflammatory diseases that inflammation could impact your ability to get pregnant. So being in remission, no matter what immune disease state you have, and not having inflammatory mediators such as um, TNFs uh, is a very important inflammatory cytokine. And so... Uh, control of inflammation by way of controlling anything that has a downstream effect onto TNF or other inflammatory mediators is paramount. So how do we explain to um, one of our, fem our female patients and say, our priority is for you not to have inflammation. So in order for you to have a successful 10 months of gestation, we need to get it right up at the beginning. So the key is explaining that inflammation control is king. So in terms, other than age and inflammation, I think one subgroup that we really need to pay attention to are women who've actually had what we call a J pouch or an ileal pouch anal anastomosis. These are ulcerative colitis patients who've actually had uh, underwent pelvic dissection surgery where they've actually removed the rectum, connected the small bowel to the anal canal and create a J pouch or ileal pouch anal anastomosis. To be truthful, women who've undergone pelvic surgery or pelvic dissection are at risk for developing scar tissue. And these, we call adhesions, could actually form around the fallopian tubes or the ovarian area. So therefore, it's more of a plumbing issue, shall we say, meaning fertilization of the egg um, would not happen naturally because of the scar tissue. So in women who've undergone this kind of surgery, we pay extra attention to their fertility and we do have to counsel women that that is a risk factor. However, we're not not doing surgery in women who need it because these colectomies are life-saving in a lot of women. And so what I will say to you that the rate of infertility is based on very old retrospective data is about three times higher. So it could be close to 50% risk of infertility. Now, it doesn't mean that they can't have a child. It means that we may need to use some assisted reproductive technology or uh, IVF or in vitro fertilization. Uh, and we get our infertility physicians involved quite quickly and we don't wait too long because we know that that is a risk factor. So, and the good news is, is that data on the use of assisted reproductive technology in women with IBD who've undergone a J pouch is the same as women who've not undergone a J pouch. So there's a lot of good news. But there are a lot of uh, in, a lot of information out there that makes it seem like they can have a baby, which it saddens me. But at the same time, when I'm able to tell them that news, it's it's an amazing experience to be able to let them know that information.